What's up everyone? In this issue of Platinum Tech, we are comparing Nissan's RB30 to Toyota's 2JZ GTE using real data and facts rather than your brother's, cousin's, uncle's, nephew's, boyfriend's, cousin's, brother's, sister's, mechanic's internet blog so that you can get the real facts and work out which one's better and why. The RB versus 2J argument has been raging since the Supra and GTR went on sale. Although really, most people are arguing the chassis they prefer. Comparing a 2.6 litre to a 3 litre is, well, a little unfair. So really, the correct comparison when it comes to modifying and racing is the RB30 versus the 2JZ. Drag racing results have proven the 2JZ is superior and handles big power without cracking or splitting the bores. OEM blocks have run into the high fives, although many of the five second imports now run billet 2JZ blocks, so we can't really compare those. Either way, the 2JZ OEM block has gone much quicker and faster than the RB. It's interesting to note that not a single RB powered car is in the top 50 import list. But most of us want to know what's more reliable in the 700 to 1200 horsepower range. We searched the internet for definitive reasons on why the 2JZ is a better engine, but most answers are simply just, it's stronger. We wanted the truth, so after our RB comparison video, we decided to put a 2JZ on the bench and compare it to the RB30 and get some real data. First up, visually, you can see they are a totally different design from the outset. Although the oiling system is not part of our comparison, you can see the size of the oil feed hole on the 2JZ compared to the RB. It's massive. The 2JZ doesn't appear to have any noticeable external features or bracing, but the meat around the head studs appears to be much thicker and beefier the whole length of the stud, especially where an RB normally cracks. Looking at the deck, you can see that the 2JZ has 11 oil return holes versus the RB's 5. The RB ones are 8mm, while the 2JZ ones are nearly 16mm almost double the flow and more than double the returns, giving eight times more oil return flow overall. This is one of the reasons the 2JZ doesn't have the oil problems of an RB with the oil getting stuck in the head. The biggest difference with the 2JZ is that it has Siamese bores, making it effectively a closed deck block. Basically, between the cylinders, the bores touch and join together so no water passes between them. This effectively doubles the size of the bore thickness at the point as pistons next to each other aren't firing at the same time. Not only does this help stop splitting of the bores, it also ties the internal part of the block together much better and creates a more rigid block. Head stud wise, the RB30 and 2JZ both use 11mm head studs. Looking inside the 2JZ, there is no extra ribbing or bracing and it's worth noting the 2JZ just has main caps and no girdle to tie it all together. Speaking with Joe from Gas Racing, he said standard caps have handled 1,000 wheel horsepower and over 2,000 horsepower, billet caps and aftermarket studs do the trick. The RB30 has an integrated girdle and main cap. The 2JZ design obviously doesn't require the girdle to make its power, but what if it did have one? Now let's get into some data collection between the two blocks. Okay, so now we're going to compare what we can compare between the RB and the 2J blocks. I'm just going to jump into hardness testing now and um, we'll see the actual differences between both these blocks. Two seventy-seven. That is extreme uh, high range quality block. We're going to go straight over and test the 2J. Now, you will notice just by the sound that this tester makes, it's a completely different animal. Two ninety-one. Massive difference between both those blocks. 
Uh, I've never had an RB rate that high before, ever, and I've tested 300 of them, uh, so I'm really impressed. Okay, so next we're going to go and discuss sonic testing and compare these two. I've already tested this 2J, so uh, it saves a bit of time. It takes me about half an hour without distractions to, to test each block, um, especially with a bit of calibration and stuffing about. Now, I'd usually test, I try and test a block a day, 30 odd a month, and this is, this is the last month's testing on RBs predominantly. So, um, I'm gonna grab my sonic testing gear and run through cylinder number one of this 2J for you. Okay, can't quite see the screen there. 5.7 mil on that face, which is what I had there. Uh, now, the 2J, you don't really even need to measure the thickness of the back end of the bore to the front end of the cylinder twos because they're Siamese. So there's no water flowing between them, they're one piece, it's joined together. So you might as well grab a micrometer. And see the difference. What do you got there? 7.22. 7.22 mil. Let's go and measure this. There's a little bit of a lip there which might give us a difference. 7.56. So we're pretty well spot on as a guide there. Uh, right, so now let's just do one more face. Okay, so here I've got 5.9. I've measured my lowest at 5.6, so somewhere on that area of the thrust face, uh, I had a 5.6. I measure the lowest reading. Now, what I did notice with this 2J is the further up I got in the bore, the thicker it became, which is odd. I don't know if that was done on purpose or not, but that's really cool. And I can see underneath, behind it, there's nothing there, there's no, water gallery joining material there to give us, uh, give us um, any reason to believe it wasn't done on purpose. Either way, we'll take it, it's cool. That's where all the cylinder pressure happens, it's all up top, it's where bores want to crack. So as far as casting quality on this 2J, it's outstanding compared to the RB anyway. Okay, now we're quickly going to go over to the RB and take a couple of readings there to grab our average sort of bore thickness. So just remembering that on the sides that weren't Siamese on the 2J, we had an average of about 5.6 millimetres. The Siamese part of the bore, obviously we had that 7.2 or whatever it was, which is uh, obviously can't change unless you go and bore it out. So this one, we're gonna just grab a random thrust side, 5.7, which is usually fairly high for an RB, I'd say. Thrust's usually always good. And then we're going to get the top and the bottom of the bore to give you an indication. 4.7 on the front face. So straight away we've got a millimetre difference there between the RB and the 2J. We're going to grab that back bore. These vary quite a lot on the back bore. 4.5 mil, which is great for an RB, there's no doubt about it. So you could go and take a millimetre out of that and you'd still have you know, 4.2 or, or so on that, on that back edge little bit thinner down the bottom. If it was anything like the 2J, it had jumped to 6 mil up the top. It's pretty consistent on that edge. Got a lot of core shift happening on RBs as well. I notice it jump not inconsistently from 5 to 3 mil within the space of about 6 or 7 mil. So um, something to look out for. You've really got to do 20 or 30 datum points per bore. And then as soon as it starts getting thin somewhere, chase it and find the actual thin spot and I make a note and more often than not if something ever does split a bore I can go back to my results and uh, and see where that thin part of the bore is and by sure it'll match up. So comparing the RBs across the range including the RD28 you do get some really thin bits now my absolute minimum we've mentioned before three millimeters uh, I get 2.2 mil 1.5 mil uh, we had a brand new N1 that uh, one of the workshops asked me to test that was a big build HKS 2.8 
billion dollar engine that tested at 2.2 millimetres and I condemned the block. I mean, you just got to take it case by case. Our last test that we're going to do is the deck thickness. So we know that the RB is usually about seven and a half mil. So we're going to quickly test this one and compare it to our 2J. 7.2 mil on this one. Hop over to the 2J. I'm just picking a random spot here, roughly same area. 9.8 mil, so roughly 10 mil on that 2J. Two mil thicker off the bat. It's, uh, it's pretty decent. So final test is weight. Now we've just done all our other testing on these blocks. We know the 2J is a denser, harder block. It should be heavier. Handles 2,000 horsepower all day, we all know that. The RB, probably half that. So we are gonna go weigh them now and see what the actual difference is. 68.8 kilograms. Okay, now we're gonna weigh the 2J and see how much heavier it is than the RB to make up for all its performance. 56.9 kilograms. That's a good 10 kilos difference. Myth busted, huh? Looking at the data shows some interesting facts. The 2JZ is a harder block, yet it weighs less. It is also shorter by approximately an inch thanks to bore spacing, and less length overall means harder to twist. Clearly, the material used is superior and shows that hardness contributes to engine strength. The RB30 hardness averages between 250 and 270, with this one being above average block with 277. Meanwhile, the 2JZ range so far has been between 290 and 310, so even the softest 2J is harder than the hardest RB. Minimum bore thickness on the sides is not much different, but the 2JZ gets thicker as it goes further up the bore and has a thicker deck by over 2mm. This combined with the Siamese bore means the 2JZ can resist the bore ballooning or splitting much more. Basically, it can hold together better under high boost and high power applications and far less prone to cracking. Although we already knew it was a superior block, now we know exactly why.